Hey guys, Magnus Robert here, bringing you another video. Today, we are going to be doing a video, my annual video, on the Simpsons Tapped Out timeline. So, today we're going to be covering the year of 2020 in full, and we're going to be going through every single new update that we got, briefly discussing the content that that update brought us, and then kind of giving my overall opinions, whether I think it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I'm going to be like really harsh and I have to give one or the other. I'm not having any middle grounds, although there will be some that sort of are a thumbs up or are a thumbs down, but very heavily sort of sway in the other direction. They're just, they're just not quite up to scratch. So we're going to be going from right at the start of the year all the way to the newest update, which is the Clash of Creeds Christmas Royale update. Uh, I will note, obviously... Technically, at the start of 2020, we had the sort of the end of the Christmas update from 2019. However, I'm not going to count that because obviously I covered that in my last timeline video. And as such, I'm also going to be covering the Clash of Creeds thing, although that that is going to be spilling over into 2021. Uh, I'm sort of counting that as a 2020 update anyway. So the characters that kind of come out in Act 4 will be included in like the top 10 lists and all that stuff, if they, if any of them do make it. Uh, so yeah, so let's get into it to, with the first update that we had for 2020. Well, that wasn't the Christmas update at least. And that was Holidays of Future Past. The thing that, the mini event that won the Tapped Out Awards as well. So Holidays of Future Past. What do we think? So overall, I think this update had a lot of good things in it. I certainly think uh, another sort of future update was definitely desirable. I'm glad that we did get one. There is so much more content to be added for future future stuff, so I'm glad that they at least did something. Getting Bart's kids was very cool, although I'm very confused of what their names is. I always thought they were Kirk and Picard, but uh, apparently in Tapped Out now they're Jiff and Skippy, so <laughs> whatever their actual names are, I'm not sure. We also then got the premium characters, which were Retired Homer and Empty Nest Marge. Yeah, you can complain that they're, then they should be costumes, but I mean, at least they're being consistent, so whatever. Uh, of course, they came with the Marge and Vacation, which, which wasn't a great building, but it has a cool animation included with it, I guess. The prize track had the South Pole, which was a bit of a lazy decoration. The Lofts of Springfield Elementary, which was a cool enough uh, skin for the school. The Heathrow Teleportation Departures, which is okay, and Ultranet. I really like the Ultranet, and then of course Jiff and Skippy with the final prize. And so, you know, a lot of returning stuff too. Uh, overall, I'm giving this one a thumbs up. I think this update is pretty good for the most part. I certainly think there are, it's not perfect. I'm not a massive fan of the South Pole decoration. and I'm not a massive fan of the Martian vacation. Is that what's called? The yeah, the Martian vacation. I'm not a big fan of that. It's a building, sorry. But everything else in the update was very good, so I can't complain too much. I think the good outweighs the bad, so yeah, overall I give this one a, a thumbs up. Next up, of course, we have Black History. So this of course focused around Black History Month, essentially, and we got some sort of African American characters, as well as Mabel Simpson on top of that. And also Abraham Simpson the first, but I guess he's half, well, yeah, it's like half black, I guess, if you if you want to say that. Uh, so, yeah, this was a major update. We got some cool buildings, such as the mega church. I like that one. The Canadian border. I'm not a massive fan of personally. I don't think it should be a building, but whatever. Hardline nightclub is okay. Moving on is okay. Cretaceous Park is a bit small, in my opinion. In terms of characters. Uh, Clarissa Will Wellington is okay. Opal, I wasn't a massive fan of. I, I really liked Abraham Simpson the first. And I really liked Virgil Simpson. I really liked Stogie. I uh, sorry, no, I didn't really like Stogie. I really liked Mabel, sorry. And the Patriarch, I was okay with. The others, though, like Stogie uh, and Opal, even Clarissa Williams, actually. Maybe even Hibbert's father, I, I wasn't a massive fan of. They weren't uh, that big to me. Uh, the buildings, there was very lacking. There was some cool buildings there, but they were heavily lacking. We also got a lot of decor uh, a few decorations there, here and there as well. The crowd of presidential kids, which I wasn't a massive fan of. The crowd of bullies, I wasn't a massive fan of either. There wasn't so there was a lot of kind of stuff I wasn't a huge fan of in this update for sure. Overall, though, I give it a thumbs down. The reason why I give it a thumbs down is I, certainly there is it's consistent, right? The update is is 
structured in a very good way. I, I certainly agree with that. But I just think that, yeah, the update felt very slow to me. And a lot of the characters I don't think are that great. Certainly there are good characters in this update. I think Virgil Simpson is definitely one of them. Uh, Mabel Simpson too, Patriarch. But the update just felt so kind of slow and lazy. I think the buildings aren't great either and they don't tie in very well. Like moving on inhibits father doesn't make much sense really. They tried to like tie it in but it really ended up... They didn't, they didn't even tie it in that well actually. Yeah, I don't know. I just think a lot of the, the sort of combinations weren't very good. The sort of feel of the whole update wasn't great and that splash screen was absolutely terrible. So overall this is a bad update. <laughs> Next up, we of course had Share the Magic. So this was a little tie-in thing for the Playdate with Destiny film that came on with the film Onwards, Onward uh, for Pixar. So there was like a, a little short film of Maggie that played the start of that Pixar film. And this was basically just advertising the film and it also gave us a new animation for Maggie. Now, I'm going to say that this is bad overall. Now, the reason why I'm saying that this is bad is because... This is such a missed opportunity. Episode tie-ins used to be such a big thing in, in the game. And I know that they haven't done episode tie-ins in such a long time. But what would have been so really, you know, so cool is if they didn't... Uh, instead of doing an episode tie-in, they did a short film tie-in. So they gave us Hudson or they gave us, you know, something from that. Even if it was just a building, the, the, the park that Maggie goes to. Just give us something from that short film, like an, an actual decoration. And add it in the game. The worst thing is, though, this animation has nothing to do with the actual short film itself. It's just her with wings kind of and a, and a wand. That's all it is. So, yeah, I just think overall it's just a wasted opportunity. So, I'm putting it as bad. Next up, we have... Dun, 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 no books given. And I'm going to be straight honest with you. This is a good update. This is a damn good update. It's really forgettable, though. And this is what annoys me, right? It's 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 tricky because there are some really awesome buildings in this. The Isotope Stadium is an amazing building. Couch World, I think, is a pretty damn good building. Uh, and then Mitchell Mansion and the Marriage Counseling are like eh to me. I mean, well, they they're good. They are good, but they're not like out of the, you know out of the park. But the Isotope Stadium and Couch World to me are out of the park. I was really disappointed that Couch World got put up as uh, worst building. I didn't choose that, by the way, uh, in the Tabitha Awards. And we also got the Tabitha, Tabitha Vix stage. I wasn't a big fan of that. And then, of course, the two characters, Tabitha Vix and Buck Mitchell. So here's my opinion on these guys. They're both kind of meh. I think Buck Mitchell is way better than Tabitha Vix, but certainly the, neither of them are like that outstanding, right? They're, they're not great characters. Sure, that's that's true. But I think that the build, the Isotope Stadium alone beats that for me. <laughs> Maybe that's a bit insane. But yeah, we got four buildings in this quest line. That's mental. We never get four buildings in a quest line. Four buildings and one character. That's that's insane to me. And then obviously the premium thing was a decoration character combo. So do you know what? I'm I feel very confident in putting this as a huge thumbs up. It was a very good update, uh, despite having some kind of mediocre characters. Simpsons Wrestling. Uh, so, I'll be honest. This is a thumbs down. This is a bad update, in my opinion. Obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna kind of tickle your balls. I'm just gonna come straight out and tell you. Uh, now, the reason for this is kind of obvious. Bad characters, bad buildings. Uh, really not bad buildings, but like kind of lacking in buildings or buildings that don't fit with the update uh, for sure. And also, I would also go as far to say mediocre decorations as well. Now. I do think this update has one thing going for it, which I will agree on, and that is this update is structured very well. I think it's structured in a particularly good way. Saying that, I don't like the quest line. I feel the quest line was kind of lazy. I thought a lot of the th the ways they tied certain sort of buildings in and decorations in made no it was there was very little effort to it. So I don't think that the sort of structure and theme is solid, but. Certainly the theme, well the theme is solid, the structure isn't solid, but the theme is certainly solid. And I agree with that, it's true. But, it's no more solid than the Black History theme really. I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't think it, it's that great. It's a, well, it's a decent enough theme I guess, but it doesn't bring anything. It'd be like them doing a, I'm trying to think of something insane, right? Doing a, I don't have anything, but say they did like a 
let's say the Simpsons did a stripper update, right? The Tap Tap did a stripper update, okay? And they just brought in a bunch of uh, like random sort of blink and you miss it strippers that were shown in Tap Tap, uh, shown in the Simpsons, and they added them to Tap Tap. I mean, sure, it's a consistent theme, but you're not getting much, any characters of substance, right? And so the characters we got were like Captain Flag, who was a sort of you know, one one scene character, Dr. Bonebreak, uh, Iron Yuppie, Professor Werner von Braun, Rumbelina, the Beefy Bishop, and Rasputin, the friendly Russian. The Beefy, the beefy Bishop is especially annoying because he comes from, like, a an image within The Simpsons. He's not even seen in, like, li in like a live-action form, if you will. You know what I mean? He's not seen as, like, moving around. And Rasputin, the friendly Russian, is by far the best. He's He looks awesome. So I give him the benefit of the doubt. But uh, the, the others are just... Yeah, they, they're all kind of meh to me. I mean, they look cool, for sure, but that's about where it ends. Uh, yeah, it wasn't great. And we had the Honest Ape skin, which I'm not sold on. It was... A, we didn't need that skin. It could have just been an animation. And in the buildings, like Springfield Wrestling Pavilion, I, I mean, I didn't really like it. I thought Tofu Bell is a cool enough building, but I found it a bit very difficult to decorate, and it also wasn't tied in very well. The Golden Ring Wrestling Headquarters, tapped out exclusive. It's kind of ugly. Doesn't really, yeah, it doesn't really stand out. The Coop Society is like meh. It's, it's all right, I guess. University of Heidelberg. I actually kind of like this one. Uh, it's okay. Springfield, Epsiscopal, that's uh, where they had the church. I mean, again, it's meh. Uh, Beefy Bishop's Barbershop is possibly the worst building ever added in Tap Tower. At least it's up there. And St. Basil's Cathedral, Basil's Cathedral, uh, is, is very good. I like that building. There are definitely good buildings, for sure. But I would say probably one, two... There's two buildings that I like a lot, and that's the University of Heidelberg and, and St. Basil's. And then the other buildings, I would say the, the church and the Coot Society and Mare, the and it's probably Tofu Bell as well as Mare. The others are bad to me, so yeah. And then the decorations, I honestly don't like any of them that much. The only one I maybe like is the party limo. Yeah, so I think overall, this one just gets a huge thumbs down for me. Simpsons Wrestling. I do think, though, like I said, they got a good theme going, but that's about it. Pride 2020. This one I found a bit tricky, you know, at first, because part of me kind of just wants a character. But I will say that I think overall this update is good. However, it's leaning, I guess, a little to bad. I I, I don't know. I'm, I, I'm finding it really hard to solidify my thoughts on it, because... Overall, I do. I really enjoyed this update. I thought the quest line was very good. I thought the character, although sorry, the, what well, the costumes were, were decent enough. How I will say though, I get. I guess there was like a missed opportunity here because I really wanted them to add uh, Queen. Is it Queen Shanti? Is that the name? But basically, uh, RuPaul's character in the from the episode. They didn't even have to give us RuPaul's character. I mean, they could have given us Sideshow Mel's uh, drag. Uh, thing or julio's drag costume it was just kind of weird because they only gave they gave us mysterious whalen and they made like a such a big deal out of it but i watched the episode and mysterious whalen is not that big of a deal in the episode so yeah maybe they'll come back and they'll return to that and the, at those characters at, at a later date that's entirely possible i thought though for the most part this one was pretty solid i mean we got curl up and die as a building and we got uh two cool decorations so we had the uh, public restroom with confuse, confusing signage and the pride car which I yeah both of them were okay and then we got two costumes Glamazon and Marge and pride Hermel or what I think it was because of whatever it was uh, yeah good decent enough costumes they weren't necessarily bad I think Glam Glamazon and Marge is I, I'm saying that wrong I know I'm saying that wrong uh, but I think she's the best uh, pride Homer is okay and mysterious whaling's okay yeah i don't know i think overall i will say this is good but it, I, I can maybe see it's like kind of leaning i guess the costumes are just not anything exceptional i mean they're okay but that's about it game of games the sequel i'm not gonna i don't want to talk about this too much bad obviously bad i'll make i might save this for like a when i do my top 10 on my ranked video even not top 10 I don't even want to get into it. I'm just going to save my thoughts for that video. But you you guys kind of... as a brief kind of rundown. Bad structure. Bad items. No characters in the prize track. Bad. 
there's some good characters like Hugh Jass and Cosine and all that, but and Wally Weasel, but that's that's it. There's some decent characters there, but they didn't go further. We didn't go them, we don't get them in the prize track, they're all premium, so bad. Anyway, let's move on. Two hundredth level update. I, I felt pretty good about this. This is of course the thing that added the truck 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 and the lot lot lot. Yeah, overall I've got nothing to complain about it. It was it was very good. Also there was a bunch of free donuts, I believe, too, so yeah. Very good. Then we had Summer Games 2020. They came at the same time with the 200th update. <sighs> Summer Games. It's such a trash update. I'm joking. It's not a trash update. It's a it's a fairly fairly good kind of upbeat update. I de I certainly kind of felt a, almost like a an yeah like an upbeat sentiment with this update. It was kind of weird. So of course we got two characters: Stephanie Brock, Stephanie Brockman, and the Summer Games chairman. I think fair. Stephanie Brockman is definitely a standout character to get. Very cool that we got her. And the Summer Games chairman is pretty pretty decent too. Then there was two buildings, the Summer Games headquarters. I'm a little like eh on this one. The Summer Games villa, again, I'm like kind of eh on it. I mean, they, they're, they're decent enough buildings to be fair, but they're nothing amazing. And then in terms of... That was, wait. And in terms of decorations, we got the... Uh, dancing children, which is kind of lame, and the sports winner stand, which is, I would say, meh. Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's nothing amazing. But yeah, overall, oh, obviously, and Patriotic Homer as well as a costume. Uh, yeah, so overall, yeah, good update. Very upbeat. Enjoyed that one a lot. So yeah, let's move on. The Van Houtens. Okay. This one is interesting. I've all kind of been talking about them to kind of encouraging but saying that they really should do an update based on like a sort of character or a family and they pulled it off with this i think this update is very good very good indeed so although lacking into in lacking in buildings for sure i think that's his biggest fault but in terms of characters it gets a huge thumbs up i mean annika annika uh, Graham, Grandma Van Houten, uh, Kirk, Kirk Mateus Van Houten, Milhus, Milford Van Houten, Grandpa Van Houten, Secretary Van Houten, and unfortunately Muskeel Millhouse. And on top of that, we also get the cool Millhouse and Italian Millhouse costumes. Very good, apart from Muscular and Millhouse. I enjoy everything else, though. They were pretty cool characters to get and costumes to get. And then buildings, obviously we only got the Nana Sophie Mussolini's Vineyard and Springfield's Little Italy and the Van Houten Villa. All of which I think are okay, but again, I, I do think this, this update was hugely lacking on buildings and there certainly were buildings that they could have given us. So with that being said though, I still think this update is overall good. Missed opportunities for sure, but I think the sort of the, the good outweighs the bad in this one for sure. So yeah. Thumbs up for this update. All this jazz. I kind of feel sort of similar to the No Books Given in, in some sense. But I'm, I'm, it's it's kind of tricky. I feel like I'm kind of reevaluating all my thoughts on these updates. I don't know. We'll have to see what I, what, what I do when I do my ranked videos. Now, in terms of the characters, I'm like kind of met on both of them. Really, I, I feel about I feel the same about them as I feel about Buck Mitchell and Tabitha Vix. Marbles, obviously you got your marbles and you got Skinny Palmer. I think about I think I think them on about the same page to be honest. They're 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 decent enough, but they're nothing amazing. I think maybe I would put these two above Tabitha Vix and Buck Mitchell just because I don't really like Tabitha Vix. Uh, I don't know. I find it just a bit generic and not particularly uh, an amazing character. But then, obviously, we've got the costume as well, which is TikTok Simpson. So, that sort of puts us over the edge. I thought TikTok Simpson was okay. Nothing amazing, but nothing terrible for sure. Now, we also have the buildings, the Groove Stone Records, which I like. Spot Cat, which, I, which is okay, I guess. Uh, K-Jazz, I like that one a lot. And the Blues Vomitorium, which is, again, I, I think that one's okay. And then the decorations we got was the Springfield Memorial Bridge, which, honestly, I, I enjoy. I, I really like them. Now, I, I, people have complained about it, the, the proportions and all that. But, I mean, the proportions and tapped out are already fucked anyway. So, I don't think I don't think it's a big deal. But the uh, Bourbon Streets Band, uh, 
that one is bad. I hate crowds. But yeah, but sorry, back to the bridge. I, I kind of got I want a tangent there. Yeah, the bridge is is very good. Uh, I like the bridge a lot. I don't care if the the proportions aren't right or anything. I think it looks it looks amazing with the moon and stuff, and that animation is very good too. Yeah, I like that. I like it a lot. So overall, all this jazz gets a gets a thumbs up for sure. Treehouse Sahara XXXI. This one is a huge thumbs up for sure. Obviously, this is the Hell update that we got. So we got cool characters: Hell Teacher, Hell Principals, Old Scratch. Very good, and the demon technician is pretty good. We got some bad characters, the torture coach and the demon mo, but hey, you're always gonna get you. Yeah. At least there was there, at least there was a lot of good, uh, good costumes. Bezelbar, Lucifer, and Donut Homer, uh, all very good. Although Donut Homer was super premium, we got we kind of got to curse that one a little bit, but at least it was not ridiculously priced, I guess. And then in terms of buildings, we got the Hell's Kitchen, Hell's Labs, Murder House, Hell Stage. Old Scratch's Gym and Hell Knows. Honestly, I think... Yeah, I'd say I like all the buildings. They're all good. I think the only one I'm a little critical of is Hell Stage. Just because it's a stage. It's like an interior. But it looks so sort of unique on itself that I kind of give it a pass. And then decorations. I'm not going to list all the decorations. There was some kind of eh decorations for sure. But... I don't know. I, I, I think the weakest part of the... Treehouse of Horror update is certainly the decorations, at least in my opinion. I don't think they're anything particularly special. Even the ones that I kind of like, I think are there's something wrong with them in some way. Like So the Stairway to Hell I like, but I think it's way too small. The Demon Car I like, but it's very similar to other things that we've got. You know, there's a lot of these kind of things. Like Even like the, the... I think the best decoration is probably the Torture Conveyor Bill. I don't know, actually. Yeah, I feel like the decorations are kind of weak for, for Treehouse of Horror, uh, but the buildings are strong enough and the characters are strong enough, so overall this one gets a thumbs up. Blogs giving. I was in a similar boat with Prior 2020 for this one. I wasn't sure whether to give this a thumbs up or thumbs down, but I think I'm leaning, I, I'm, I, I've decided I'm, I'm giving it a thumbs up. Now the reason for this is I think... I like it when they make a, an entire update out of nothing. And I think that, honestly, the the last Thanksgiving segment, there isn't really much you can do to make an update out of that. Or at least I didn't think they could. And they, to be fair, to be fair to them, they made a pretty decent enough update out of it. Don't get me wrong, it's nothing amazing, but it's pretty cool. You obviously get Swapper Jacks at the start, which is a really, really awesome building. or Something I've wanted in the game for a while. The time traveling delivery service, which is eh. The jelly monster, I like. I think the the animations are good. The size of him is pretty awesome. Overall, very good character. The giant jelly can is awesome, and humanity's hope I think shouldn't be a building, sure, and should probably be a bit bigger. But I don't. I, I'll be lying to you if I say that it annoys me that much. I, I I'm overall kind of cool with it. Um, yeah. I don't want like fake outrage. I think it's fine. It's not. It's nothing. It's well. It's more meh. But yeah, that was the update. And obviously the super premium. We got the blog courts with the blog alien. And honestly, I think although yes, he's a, a nothing burger character. I think what they did with him in the quest line and what they do like him having voice and him just overall kind of being a big part of the update. I think they worked him in really well and actually gave him a character. Now, don't get me wrong, I think it would have been better if they gave us a 3-in-1 character. Because obviously in the segment, the Thanksgiving of Horror segment, we see the free blog aliens at the end. I think it would have been better if we got like a 3-in-1 character personally. But with what we got, I, I don't think he was that bad. So, yeah, I'm giving the blogs giving a, a, a thumbs up. It's a good update. Black Friday 2020. I'm always so quick to judge Black Friday updates because I always see the awful, ridiculous, super premium stuff and it just makes me really, really angry. And sometimes I forget the good that Black Friday does. And that's true. Black Friday does give some good deals for people who don't have certain items in the game. I always forget this just because I have everything in the game pretty much. I think there's like one or two things I'm missing. But um, I pretty much have everything in the game. So these mystery boxes never pop up for me. So I never get to see this stuff. And I do apologize for that. It's my fault. That being said though, I don't know. I can't really give too many points to that. I think the super premium stuff, the, the way how expensive it is and the way that they do it is honestly kind of... 
it outweighs the goods of the mystery boxes. But I will say, I guess I would sway a little bit to good for Black Friday because I, sometimes I do kind of forget about the good that it, that it does bring, it, and it certainly does. Yeah, uh, that's pretty much all I have to say about it, really. Uh, but overall, I probably would say it's bad, personally, and swaying to bad. But you know, I I can certainly see the the good in the update for sure. And then finally, finally, we have the most recent update, which is of course Clash of Creeds Christmas Royale. <sighs> I found this one the trickiest to really kind of give a rating for. The reason for it is there's certainly very, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad. I'm going to say good overall. Now the reason why I'm saying good overall is as followed. The characters aren't that great really. I think Yahweh is probably going to be the best character of the update for sure. I uh, and actually Moses, I like Moses' quest and stuff. So Moses and, and Yahweh are good characters. I think the leader is a meh character, unfortunately. I really wanted him to be awesome, but I think the animations that we got for him and the sort of lackluster uh, quest line and the fact that he is leading the event but you don't unlock him, that's kind of made me put the leader in the meh category instead of the good category. And it's annoying because it's a character I've really wanted in the game for a while. Krusty Claus is uh, okay, I guess. Baby Jesus is okay. King Herod is okay. Obviously, I haven't seen Yahweh and Andre yet, but I don't imagine Andre will be that any, anything that special. But Yahweh does have a very cool feature that's coming up, so I will give that one a thumbs up for now. Sexy Santa Marge is kind of probably meh. Uh, or bad. I haven't obviously I haven't played through the character yet, so I can't give you my definitive score. But this shouldn't change. I'm I'm pretty set in stone. I don't think Act Four is going to change my mind too much uh, about it. De it certainly won't change my rating. Yeah, the main reason why I think this update is good overall, though, is just the structure. The structure has kind of gone back to normal. Instead of having a break for tokens, we're actually having decent sort of prizes kind of put in there instead of the tokens and the tokens are kind of unlocked at the end i like this a lot and even looking at like act one for example we got yeah we got the the truck we got the the more sort of thing act two obviously was a bad act because we didn't get any characters and that is a true that is true but i think again it kind of it's outweighed by the good that the update does with the the structure uh, in terms of like actually adding a, you know adding five prizes is what i mean obviously the structure is kind of horrible and it's it's broken like game of games the sequel but it, it's it's just a, it's just tricky balancing act right i'm trying to my best i would say i'm still saying this update's good i certainly think though it's leaning to bad it's not an amazing update the structure's a bit broken there's you know i don't know I really don't know. <laughs> I like a lot of stuff in this update is what I'm trying to say. So it's it's hard for me to give it a bad. I, I, the structure for me, it doesn't annoy me too much. It didn't annoy me too much in Act 1 at least. Uh, it annoyed me a lot in Act 2. And it didn't annoy me too much in Act 3. That's all I say. Cause I, I kind of liked what they did with Moses actually in Act 3. In Act 3, I think the structure was fine actually. Controversial opinion. Anyway, I'm doing my little rambling. Let's end the video here with uh, just a little segment at the end here. Well, I'm just going to quickly kind of briefly talk about the year in a sort of like overview. So 2020, was 2020 a good year or a bad year? Well, I certainly think it was a good year for mini events. That's for sure. I would, I've said that every mini event is good. Some are kind of leaning to bad. I think blogs giving leads a little bit to bad and prior 2020 leads a little bit to bad, but the rest are, are pretty good and uh, very solid mini events i do think it's a bad year for major events personally i don't i didn't think black history was particularly that great or, or it's going to be particularly memorable i didn't think simpsons wrestling was a particularly good idea although it does have it has a good theme that's about all it's good, got going for it uh, game of games the sequel is overall bad you guys know that i hate that one and then we of course had the uh, Clash of Creeds Christmas Royale, which I'm like sort of leaning to good, leaning to bad. I'm like really split on that one. I know I said I wouldn't do that. I'm going to overall say that Clash of Creeds Christmas Royale is good, but it's so nearly going to bad. It's it's like on a hairline fracture away from bad. There were some good major updates, obviously. Treehouse of Horror is a good example, and the Van Houten's one as well. They both were very good. Yeah, both were very good. 
major events. I really wish, though, that we got some St. Patrick's Day and 4th of July events, but I'm glad at least they did Pride this year, hoping that they do maybe St. Patrick's Day or 4th of July next year. That could be cool. And maybe as a, you know, as a mini event, that could be very awesome. But yeah, overall, the year in full, I think, was meh. It was a meh year. There isn't... There is good there, but there's nothing that really stood out, I think, in the entire year. There certainly were good updates, but yeah, I I, I was I'm just I want I want like a, a really awesome update that we got like in sort of previous years. There's nothing like a, a sort of destination Springfield or a you know, like the Itchy and Scratchy Land or the zoo update or something like that. There's nothing like that that really stands out where it's like, oh okay, this is gonna be a memorable update. I think they were all very forgettable. The only exception, maybe, was Treehouse of Horror. Because that was kind of cool. But even that, I think, I'll probably forget eventually. Yeah, this update overall... Uh, sorry, this year overall was kind of lackluster. So, that's it for my timeline. Tell me your thoughts of the year 2020. Tell me your thoughts on all the updates. Maybe give me your ranked thing. And tell me whether you think all the updates are good or bad. And, uh, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.